Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio! You know of course that one of the most popular challenges nowadays on YouTube is the Bratz challenge. And normally me as a doll artist should become super excited because finally something so 100% doll related has become that viral on YouTube. And of course I should sit here and make some, I don't know, turn Barbie doll into a Bratz or Monster High into a Bratz or myself into a Bratz or Bratz into a Bratz. There are options. But there is one problem. I'm scared of Bratz dolls. <laughs> really, I don't know, of course, it's all a matter of taste. But Bratz is the only doll on the market nowadays that I think is ugly. I know, now probably half of the people just close down this video, unsubscribe from this channel and we'll never see you again. <laughs> but please stay with me, it's gonna be fun, I promise you. Because I've decided to do something completely different. Not completely different, but go completely different direction. I'm not going to turn something that is not Bratz into a Bratz, but I'm going to turn a Bratz doll into something better looking. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, it's just a matter of taste. I know that many of you adore these dolls. But at the same time, me not. And I cannot lie and I cannot sit here and say, hey, hey, let's make Bratz dolls, they're so cool. Maybe because I'm a little bit older. I've never watched Bratz cartoons. I have nothing personally related to this Bratz story. That's why I look at these dolls just as an object. And for me, this object is not pretty. No. Excuse me, it's a matter of taste, like I say. I appreciate all of you who love these dolls, who grew up with these dolls, who have really some personal connections, personal relations. And of course, for you, I personally believe and I know that for you, this doll is pretty. For me, not. For me, she is disproportional. For me, it's something, no, I don't know. Just why, why did they make something like this? Again, doesn't matter, it's, it's a matter of taste. And to make this transformation double as fun, I didn't buy just some regular Bratz doll. I've bought a huge set <laughs> that contains a Bratz doll. They say her name is Jade. I don't know, I'm going to trust this box, okay. And here we will be able to decorate her outfits. I don't know, I didn't open this box yet, let's do it together and see what it's gonna be, what are we going to make today. So here is the doll, here are some sprays with paint, I see, here are two such mannequin bodies to put the dresses on, and here is a whole bunch of stickers, some patterns, I think it's gonna be fun. So here we have the white outfits that we are going to decorate later. So here is a skirt, here is a t-shirt, and here is a long white dress. But let's keep this outfit fun for later, for the end of this video, because we have extremely lot of work to do on this doll. Because honestly, today I'm going to do my best. Because you ask me so many times in the comments and during the live stream if I can repaint the Bratz doll. And my answer always was, guys, I'm not sure if I can help her. <laughs> so today I'm going to do 100% my best, all my tricks, all my secret techniques. I'm going to use them all, trying to get a really good end result but honestly i don't believe it myself at the moment so and here is the doll you of course seen it many times for me it's actually the first time i hold the brats dolls in my hands before i've just seen them in the supermarkets <laughs> and it's even worse than i expected no her face let's take a look at her face first of all her head is huge second of all it's way too round but it's okay, with this I can't go. <laughs> but she has no nose approximately, there is just something. Her lips, it's... No, I, I don't know what's happened. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to say, it's bad, it's bad. The, the, the eyes, the nose, the scalp, this too long monkey arms, the, even the rubber, like, it's too... Like, it's not hard, it's, you can bend it in all directions. Is it good? For me, it's questionable, honestly. 
I will say nothing about the big feet. Wait, does she have feet? You're laughing now, probably you know it already because you played with Brad Stolls before for me the first time. And now I see something that is gonna shock me now. <laughs> I feel it already. <laughs> Why? Is it really? Was it really needed to make these huge boots and to make no feet whatsoever? I'm depressed. <laughs> anyway, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're going to take this doll and to turn her into something beautiful, into something with feet, into something with maybe more proportional head into someone with nose and with lips. I don't know, maybe I'm asking too much, maybe it's not really necessary, but let's do our really best. So, first of all, let's remove this outfit. This one also can be repainted or styled or whatever with these sprays and stickers in the set. No, I have nothing against her hair, this is it. But even then we're going to cut her hair as short as possible and after her hair is gone I'm going to warm it up with a hair dryer to make it soft and to be able to remove the head easily from the body now the head is very soft very warm and I can quite easily Pull it out. Oh, that's it. By the way, I shouldn't even warm it up that hard. Brad stalls are much easier hats to get to take them off than the monster high ones. Good to know. Learning. <laughs> and then I'm taking my tweezers and I'm removing the rest of the hair from the inside of her head. And by the way, she doesn't have that much hair. You see, monster high dolls are much better rerouted, much more tight rerouted, closer to each other. <laughs> it took a while, but now I'm happy her head is clean and I can take my acetone and remove her eyes, lips and this black paint from her head. And now let's start the transformation. And to start, I want to shrink her head. For this I will need pure acetone. I put it in a glass jar, then add approximately third of it of water and then I'm going to soak this hat in pure acetone. There should be enough space in this jar because soon this hat is going to become much bigger and then it's very important that it doesn't really push the sides of the jar otherwise it's going to squeeze the hat and it might crack. And like this I'm going to let it for 48 hours and soon we're gonna see what will happen. And this is how the head looks after 48 hours in the acetone and strangely enough I can tell you that it became like less big than Monster High doll heads. But let's see how it feels. It's still quite hard by the way. Yeah, this is what I thought from the very beginning that this kind of material feels different than from Monster High dolls because Monster High dolls heads are much more soft and rubberish and this one felt quite hard firm and almost plastic to me so now i will let it dry for another 48 hours and let's see what is gonna happen because normally now it should become much smaller it's supposed to shrink and it's also supposed to become very hard really like plastic hard so this is how her head looks after 48 hours of soaking in acetone and then 48 hours of drying 
It has become a little bit smaller, but actually I'm not that much impressed with the end result. On Monster High dolls this method performs much better. No, anyway, it's become a little bit smaller, like maybe half centimeter from each side we've lost. No, it's already good. And now let's move on. And it's actually the big day today because it's time for plastic surgery. I will of course need a very, 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 very sharp knife and different kinds of sanding paper. This one is 400 and this one is 180. So let's start and what exactly I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to give her a normal new nose because you see that she has approximately no nose, just some bump on the middle of her face. And I also want to change a little bit the shape of her lips and I also want to make her face a little bit like less round here if you look like this, for example, you can see that it just flat around. Normally face is more point. So let's start with the nose. And first of all, I'm going to cut a little bit. So now I'm going to take a piece of sanding paper and sand her face very actively. It will take a while, of course, I would say a couple of hours, but we have to make this face, the surface really, really, really smooth because you see now there are such a cutting marks everywhere. It cannot be like this. This is the less exciting part of the makeover. So I've sanded one side of her face and I'm really happy with the result. Look, it looks really, really, really good. And her nose and her cheeks and the jawline here, you see, it's really sharp. So let's continue on another side. And this is how her face looks after the plastic surgery. And I can tell you that I'm not just happy, I'm proud of the end result. But the plastic surgery is not done yet completely because we still have to take care of her body, especially of this strange feet situation. Of course, my very first idea was to sculpt the new feet for her completely from scratch using the epoxy sculpt. But then I thought, look, this doll's feet, legs, are made of some sort of hard rubber. And this epoxy sculpt is going to dry into something completely stone hard. And I'm not really sure if it's gonna look very good in the end. So I've started to look for something special and check it out what I found. This is such a fake Chinese Monster High doll body. I've bought it probably a year, maybe a year and a half ago for a special video on my channel. Then I've got this fake Barbie from a Chinese website and I gave it a complete makeover just to see what can you do with a cheaper version of a famous branded doll. And then I've got actually more than one body and this is the second one, the leftover one. And what is cool about it is that her legs are made out of exactly the same kind of a hard rubber. So I thought it could be a really cool idea to combine these two dolls together because then later me and also the new owner of this doll, for example, will be able to give this doll absolutely 
any pair of shoes from his Monster High shoe collection. And uh, if I, for example, sculpt my own feet from zero, from scratch, it will mean that this doll will have just one pair of shoes, also specially created for this look. So, you know, I think it's quite a smart solution in some way, and I have prepared here already this beautiful saw, and I'm ready to start the second part of the plastic surgery. Actually, I could just cut them off with a knife, it's rubber, it's not that hard, you don't need a saw here. So here are the feet and now I'm going to take my Dremel tool and make a couple of holes here. And now let's try them on. Looks very good, really amazing, guys, I'm happy. <laughs> and I take my knife and I cut all these axis pieces, trying to make it kind of seamless, the place of the connection of these two doll, doll bodies. And check it out, this is how it looks. I think it looks amazing. Now, of course, I will still have to glue the feet to the body. And for this, I'm going to use hot glue. Yeah, I think it looks really good, but of course now we will have to repaint her body and the face completely because we will have to hide this difference in color between her feet and the body. So that's why we'll have to prepare this body as well. First of all, I'm going to sand it with nail buffers to remove this glossy top from the surface. The body has to become very matte. And after this, I'm removing all this dust and also grease from my fingers with an acetone-free nail polish remover. And you see, I have also attached such a thread to her neck to be able to hand this doll while it's drying. Now I'm going to mix acrylic paint to get the color similar to her original skin tone. And after this, I'm going to airbrush this doll with a couple of layers of this paint. After applying a couple of layers of acrylic paint, I have sealed her face with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. And now I'm finally ready to give her her new face. So let's go. I start like always with sketching her eyes and eyebrows. After this, I'm going to contour her face and here I have prepared very natural, very basic color pastels. So this so-called plastic surgery plus good contouring will normally give a very impressive result in the end. I hope so. <laughs> okay, now this layer looks good and I think I can protect it with the sealant. On the next layer, I'm going to draw more detail, the eyelids and the nose. And first of all, I'm going to do it with my pencils. And after this, I'm going to add a touch of soft pastels on top of it. I use Q-tips to blend the edges and then I'm taking a very fine brush, pastels, and I'm going over this blended pencil. And then I'm also working some extra on her nose because, you know, I've sculpted it myself, so it could use some extra attention. <laughs> Thank you. 
And what else I want to do on this layer is to add a touch of blush to her cheeks and also to her eyelids. And after this, I'm going to protect my work with this sealant again. Yeah, now I think I'm quite happy with her skin tone and I can start drawing her eyes and lips with my pencils. And I start like always with the white of her eyes. Then I draw the waterline and the tear duct. I think I want to give her some unusual eye color. For example, let's make them purple or maybe lilac, something like this. Then we can draw the eyebrows. And let's also draw her lips now. This time I want to go for very natural, very nude, very light lips. So it will be very, very, very normal neutral makeup, lip makeup today. Now I want to give her eyes and lips more realistic dimension and for this I'm going to apply some shadows and highlights. I also want to add some shadows to her lips. Now let's draw the bottom eyelashes using this very sharp black pencil. This layer I've protected with the sealant and now I'm going to add reflections to her eyes using white acrylic paint. And now let's blush her body, because let's check it out how this unblushed body looks next to the blushed face and of course they should look the same. So I'm going to take this palette with pastels that I've used to blush her face and I'm going to blush her body using of course Mr. Super Clear between the layers to protect my work. Now I think her face is almost ready, so I can finally make a wig for her and I'm going to use this beautiful curly hair. Look, it's very pretty, it has such a gradient, so I think it's gonna look really good. And now I still want to attach the false lashes and to add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips. And now it's finally the moment when we can start playing with this thing here. You see I've already built up this construction. And what do we have? Here is this uh, booth, shower cabin for spraying. Here we have three kinds of paint and it's by the way like not enough. Look, we have green paint, we have red paint and we have a yellow paint. I don't know, it's a little bit a strange color combo to me. For example, I would love to have a blue color because it's like normally RGB, you know, red, green, blue. And here we have red, green and yellow. Okay, because for example, by mixing blue and yellow, I could make green myself. So I don't really need to have it in the set. No, yeah, there is nothing to do. <laughs> this is what we have. Then I have here uh, four kinds of stencils. Uh, here are two animalistic prints, here we have, I don't know what it is, brat slips or hamburgers, it's <laughs> difficult to say. Here are the stars, this one I really like. Uh, this one is also kind of fun, you see we have here all kinds of hearts, flowers, cupcakes, crowns, ice cream, so this one is kind of cool also. And this one I like also because here we can make a polka dot design and with this thing we can make stripes. 
Then we have also here this tape for decorating outfits. I'm not really sure if it's a very good idea to decorate outfits with tape. Let's try it. And here we have also such a marker, some sort of a marker, such a simple tiny thing. Uh, these stickers I really love. And here I have also a couple of rhinestones. And here is also another sheet with the stickers. Then we have two mannequins and two dresses. This one is a long dress. And here is a short dress. And if I push this button, you see it's turning. And so like this I can cover it with paint from all directions. At least this is how it's supposed to be, but I'm not sure if it really works like this shape. But let's experiment. <laughs> First of all, I want to see how this paint spray even work. I want to do it, of course, first of all on paper, because I don't want to waste the outfits immediately. And then spray. No, 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 wait. If I spray something... No, but no, 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 guys. Come on, this is just the worst spraying possible. If your airbrush performs like this, you're supposed to clean it completely, like really deep clean, and even check if there is nothing banded and nothing is broken. But here it's like normal. Look, all this, all these spots will be on the outfit. No, it's not okay, guys. If you're creating something in Jackson Pollock style, it would probably be okay. I don't know, I would really love to make something pretty and decent looking using these sprays, but I'm absolutely not sure if it's possible. Should we even try? I don't really want to waste these outfits. Anyway, since I've bought this set already, I have to try it. I have to try how it works and how it looks in the end. No, all in all it's not that bad. Look, we have some sort of a gradient. Now let's make, for example, some red gradient on the bottom. Whoa, it <laughs> looks bloody. <laughs> it suddenly looks bloody. Turn, 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 turn up my head. It's here still a little bit white on the top, so let's add already green color as well here. Experimenting. At least it looks much better than I've expected. Okay, I will let it dry for a while and now I want to try the stencils probably on this dress. To work with the stencils I will make this t-shirt flat on a piece of paper. And now let's make, for example, a t-shirt with stripes. Looks pretty bloody. <laughs> no, yeah, we got stripes, but they look pretty messy. And also my hands look like this. Okay. Not sure about all these guys. And the stripes, they don't really stay. You see, this paint is constantly spreading around. Let's try something else. Let's try to put here, for example, stars on top or something. Yeah, the stars look better, so I think I will just paint the bottom of this t-shirt completely red, because these stripes, I don't know, just looks dirty and messy. And then I start to wonder if you can wash this paint off. And of course I couldn't wash off the paint completely, exactly as I expected. So what are we going to do now? Now I'm going to paint this dress completely in red. Then I'm going to let both of these dresses dry completely. No, then we'll figure out something, okay? <laughs> and 
and I think the red paint is out. No, come on! So, this amount of red paint is enough to paint this short dress completely and to paint the bottom of a long dress. That's it. Cool. Okay, this is how it looks dry. Not that spectacular, but anyway, it's not that bad as well. I think I can continue working on it, but I don't want to keep spraying anymore. The stencils and the spray don't really go together. I want to try something else. I want to try to use these stencils together with some sponge. So let's try. I'm not sure if this is gonna look really ideal, but at least I suppose it's gonna be better than with the spray. Nope, it's not really better. No guys, these stencils, they don't really work together with the paint and the fabric. But I have another idea. I have here such a set of uh, markers for fabric. And I think I'm going to try to do something with this set of markers. I have a feeling it's going to work way better. Look, here I still have this skirt. This t-shirt and another skirt. So now let's try to decorate it using these markers. I have a feeling that they're going to work better than the paint. And now let's take this skirt and color it with a mix of blue and black pencils to give it some a little bit denim effect. So I have just this white t-shirt left and we still have to test these stickers. No, well, let's try. <laughs> By the way, these stickers, they're quite strong. Her outfit, I'm going to complete with this pair of adorable Monster High shoes. And now I think it's time to take a look at the end result pictures. And here is the result of this quite complicated transformation. I hope, guys, you could survive till the end of this video. But it took me for sure three weeks to give this Bratz doll a makeover. And right now I'm really happy with the way she looks. Of course, she's still very cartoonish because her head is anyway huge, but there is nothing to do about it and it's not that terrifying anymore to me. And now I absolutely can't wait to hear your opinions. What are your impressions? And also, please tell me if you're a Bratz fan or maybe there are some other people like me who just can't relate or maybe just me, maybe just my personal issues, I don't know. Just let's not forget to respect the both opinions. This doll will be for sale on eBay together with two other dolls, so check the link in the description box if it's interesting for you. And now let's make an instant picture of this doll to hang it on my whiteboard. And that was the transformation of the week, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if so, please don't forget to put your thumbs up under this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, push the bell button. And I will see you already very soon. Next week, Friday, we are going to make something very special again. Love you guys. Bye.